Uh, hi, I'm Eric. I'm speaking along with Richard today. Um, we're here to tell you about Ray Air, a scalable runtime for end-to-end -end ML applications that will be beta in Ray 2.0. Um, so first, a bit about Anyscale. Uh, Anyscale is a unified compute platform that makes it easy to develop, deploy, and manage scalable AI and Python applications using Ray. Um, so where is this AI, pro AI runtime project coming from? Um, as a part of the Ray team, we've worked with ML users and infra groups at leading companies such as Uber, Ant, Shopify, and so on over the past several years. And AIR is our effort to synthesize the lessons learned into a simple toolkit for the community. So kind of in a nutshell, um, AIR is uh, built on Ray's existing scalable libraries. It provides unified APIs for end-to-end -end machine learning. And the goal is really to simplify ML infrastructure. So let me tell you about some of the challenges we've heard from our users about their ML infrastructure. A common theme is that it's still not easy to take ML from development to production at scale. Um, on the right, you can see an example of an everyday ML pipeline. You do some pre-processing, you're doing some training, and then you're doing inference on your model. And even with this quite basic you know, pattern, you can see that we already have two or three distributed systems, um, and this can be um, adding a lot of operational overheads, a lot of development overheads to stitch these together. On top of that, the machine learning field uh, moves quite quickly. So um, infrastructure teams often have to uh, you know, move their users through many migrations, and the teams get like, a little fatigued about having to migrate over time to catch up. So let's dig into to the, this, these problems a little bit more. Um, there are really three main problems at play, and the root cause is kind of a scaling. So scaling is hard, especially if you're a data scientist and you really want to focus on just machine learning. Uh, platform solutions, of course, are one way of addressing this problem, um, but you know, a purpose-built platform can limit your flexibility as the field is rapidly changing. And um, then you have kind of a catch-22. Of course, you can build your own, um, but um, you know, uh, building and orchestrating distributed systems is from scratch to address new use cases is, is incredibly time-consuming, and, and it's out of reach of most organizations. So to understand um, kind of the root cause of these problems more, scaling, let's travel back into time to 2010. Um, so back then, we were all probably working, you were all working on a single machine, um, data with just some files, and you can run uh, you know, ML script on your laptop. And these problems were much, much easier to tackle back then. With Ray and Air, we're trying to bring a similar experience to ML practitioners in today's landscape. So today, machine learning is much more effective. It's much more powerful, which is really great. But now there's a million different libraries and, and systems out there. So what our users really like about Ray is um, the ability to build any kind of distributed machine learning pipeline or application in just a single Python script um, using the you know, best-in-class libraries from the ecosystem. For example, um, you might leverage data libraries and ML libraries for pre-processing and training, and um, other libraries for, for inference and, and for serving. So um, let's talk about uh, Ray Air. Uh, Air is a scalable toolkit for end-to-end -end ML. Um, uh, Air is built on Ray Core for uh, open and flexible ML compute end-to-end. -end. So Ray is really focusing on compute, just distributed compute. So Air leverages integrations for things like storage and tracking. Air also has high-level libraries that make scaling easy for both data scientists and engineers. And what's new since Ray 1.0 um, in Ray libraries is a unified API. So Air libraries now work seamlessly with each other, and they seamlessly integrate with the, the ecosystem via common integration points. Um, it's actually this, this scalable library layer is really important. And this is why. If you have non-scalable libraries, there can be a high friction handoff between development and going to production. But if you have a scalable library layer, you can use the same infrastructure, the same code, in both development and production, improving productivity for both data scientists and the platform engineers. Finally, um, AIR offers scalable integration with best-of-breed libraries and MLOps tools. Uh, this includes, of course, uh, built-in integrations for the most uh, popular frameworks, uh, some of which Robert showed. Uh, there are developer APIs to easily add new integrations with new frameworks. 
And finally, since Era is built on Ray, uh, you can also build custom scalable components using Ray Core directly. So overall, Era is, is really simplifying scalable ML infrastructure. Uh, scaling is made easy with, with Ray, since you can scale from dev to prod with the same code. Air has a unified API for scalable integrations, which means you can choose your own best-in-class ecosystem libraries. Um, and and, it, and uh, finally, it's, Air is uh, capable of running a, a diverse set of workloads, so you can deal with one system, Ray, instead of managing many different systems. OK, uh, when would you use Ray Air? So probably the most common use case is just using Air to scale a single workload, such as training or batch prediction. And this means you don't need to you know, learn really about all the libraries and that Ray offers, just, just the one that you're interested in. You can also build end-to-end -end scalable applications in Air. Um, Air makes it easy to plug and play new tools from the ecosystem through simple APIs like the, the Trainer API or the Tuner API. Um, so it can, can be used to set up any kind of distributed training or tuning job. And finally, um, users are using Ray and Air to build custom ML platforms. And we have uh, a few talks on this um, later in the summit. So Air is really, is really about for the entire ML organization. For data scientists, it's enables simple scalability of uh, particular workloads or entire ML pipelines. Uh, for ML engineers, it provides the unified platform abstractions that can be used to easily onboard and integrate necessary toolings. So in short, uh, Air is a scalable and unified toolkit for, for both roles. Um, you might be wondering, when would you use Ray Air, this new library layer, versus Ray Core? Um, so the, the answer is, like, if you're a data scientist or ML engineer, you probably want to start with um, Air, which is um, you know, easy to get started with, has a bunch of APIs to interact with the ecosystem. But if you're, if you're um, you know, pushing the bleeding edge, you're building new things at hyperscale or, or specialized use cases, um, you might want to consider Ray Core, which provides more customizability and control because it's a lower level layer. But it's important to note that you can, these work well together and you can use one or, or, or both. That's, that's fine. OK, so what comes out of the box with Air? Air has high level modules for data preprocessing, training, tuning, batch predicting, prediction and serving. Um, and I'm going to walk through just a quick overview of all of these libraries. So we have scalable data preparation and loading with RAID data. So this is a data set library built specifically for machine learning. It lets you seamlessly to distribute data uh, from megabyte scale to you know, terabyte scale. And it allows you to build uh, a, a training, training pipelines with this preprocessor abstraction. So um, you can kind of create a data set um, from data, create a preprocessor, and uh, set up a distributed training pipeline. This leads to uh, the Ray Train library, which provides scalable model training. Um, so Train is a single API to run the most popular ML training frameworks and offers seamless integration with the other, other Ray libraries. For example, you can easily create a Torch trainer or XGBoost trainer or Hugging Face trainer and so on. And uh, these trainers integrate seamlessly with data sets and, and with, with, with Tune. Uh, the Tune library provides scalable hyperparameter tuning. Um, so you can use it to run a hyperparameter sweep, a multiple concurrent training jobs. Um, it integrates with the, the cutting edge optimization algorithms from the open source ecosystem. And it provides fault tolerance for your experiments at scale. So given an existing trainer, such as Torch Trainer, or it could be just some other function. It doesn't have to be you know, train. Um, you can create a tuner, give a param space, and then run that experiment with tuner.fit. Air also includes um, a batch prediction utility. Batch predictor lets you execute inference on distributed data sets using CPUs and GPUs. And you can bring your own model, or you can load existing checkpoints from train. Here are um, a very simple example of creating a predictor from an XGBoost model, XGBoost checkpoint. Call it predict on a rate data set. And I can write, of course, write the results back to storage. Finally, uh, Ray serve lets you deploy uh, models as highly available inference services in Array. And you can also build multi-model pipelines with, with custom business logic with the serve's new um, deployment graph feature. Um, and as usual, this, this integrates well with a lot of libraries. You can load a checkpoint into, into a serve deployment with just one line of code. 
and deploy it and, and start using it right away. So I, I just want to recap what I walked through so far. Uh, we talked about what AIR is. It's a scalable toolkit for end-to-end -end ML applications. It's built on Ray Core. Um, uh, it has a number of high-level libraries. And these libraries have really great integrations with each other and with the ML ecosystem. We also talked about when you use Ray, uh, when you use Ray Air for, for scaling workloads um, and leveraging its unified uh, machine learning API and platforms. Um, finally, we talked about who Air is for. Air is for both data scientists and ML engineers. Um, yeah, so next I'm going to hand it off to Richard, who will tell you a little bit more about how to use Air, um, diving into more details of the code, and, and talking about user experiences. Thanks, Eric. So hi, I'm Richard. I'm an engineering manager here on the open source team uh, at Anyscale. And I'd love to welcome you to uh, come dive with me into how you can use AIR in practice. So you might recall this slide from Eric's part of the talk. There are four situations where you will be using Ray AIR. You should be using Ray AIR. And I'll be walking through concrete examples for each one of these different use cases. Let's first walk through the example where you have a single machine learning workload that you want to scale. Right, so oftentimes, you might already have an existing platform solution, and you don't want to replace the entire platform. So Ray Air uh, does not require you to rip out your existing end-to-end -end solution. Um, Air can be used in a piecemeal fashion. So let's take an example where you would use Ray Air in a situation where you only want to replace the batch prediction uh, stage of your pipeline. So in less than 20 lines of code, I'm going to show on the screen here how you might do this with Ray Air. So first, you have here on the, on the screen uh, two lines of code. And these two lines represent, one, a pre-trained model, and second, a cloud storage UR. So then what we can do in, in just a couple lines of code here is we can use Ray Data to create a Ray Data set uh, reading from this S3 bucket that we have above. We'll then create a, a PyTorch checkpoint from the model. And this checkpoint is then used uh, to create a batch predictor object, which we saw from a previous section of the talk. By calling predictor.predict, .predict, uh, you can call and, and do distributed inference on this data set, automatically scaling out the number of workers and also increasing the size of your cluster uh, if you're on the cloud if necessary. It's also not shown here, but you can also configure this to use uh, GPUs for, for batch prediction. And finally, with, with the simple, simple API call, you can write these outputs back to S3. So what we've demonstrated here is a really simple way of doing batch prediction. Uh, and to run this in, inside a machine learning pipeline, you might also want to add a couple other logic uh, lines to, to start up or shut down your cluster. Now, on the other hand, compared to other existing solutions, uh, such as SageMaker, Ray Air actually reduces a lot of unnecessary complexity. So compared to Ray Air, you might have uh, the batch inference module from SageMaker requiring multiple steps for the user uh, to get working, such as creating the Airflow DAG, uh, creating a Docker image, uh, testing things with like the ECR, and 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 deciding all these other scalability parameters that that really aren't and it really are abstracted away if you use Ray Air. So so again, so the, the idea here is that like you can use Ray Air in a piecemeal fashion, and even by using just a single part you can reduce the complexity significantly. So, so that was the first use case. How about let's walk through the second use case here, which is scaling end-to-end -end machine learning applications. Right. Um, and so let's walk through an a, example of a, a ML pipeline you might want to scale. So um, the takeaway here is that uh, if you want to use these multiple Ray Air components, um, you can actually do so in a very seamless, intuitive interface uh, using Ray Air's end-to-end uh, -end APIs. So let's walk through this example with the code on the screen. Right? Um, so first, you have data processing. Uh, so here, we're loading a CSV uh, file from, from some custom location like cloud storage or your HDFS uh, cluster or something like that. And uh, you can generate uh, training validation and test that using uh, some of the Air APIs that we provide for distributed, doing this in a distributed fashion. We then create a preprocessor, which will be used to normalize a given column of the data set. For model training, I'm going to take XGBoost as an example. But we also support, obviously, the doing deep learning frameworks, um, and such as Hugging Face, PyTorch, TensorFlow. 
in this example, I'm passing in the training and validation data set uh, in addition to the defined uh, preprocessor. And by calling train, uh, trainer.fit, we'll be running the preprocessing uh, on the training data set and taking that given preprocessor uh, and then running distributed actually boost uh, on, 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 the X, uh, on the data set and then calling into the validation data set at, at periodic frequency to, to generate validation statistics. You can also pass in this trainer object into a tuner object uh, just via the simple composition API. Now, this is the new default API for Raytune if you've been using Raytune before uh, with this uh, class-based tuner object. Uh, notice here that both the trainer and the tuner object can be both distributed. And finally, we'll take that trained model checkpoint from the tuner, um, and we'll pass it into a batch prediction module that we've seen in this previous example. So to further, uh, to further emphasize this, this is uh, really want to make sure that, that we, we get this across clear. It's, that it's actually very easy to scale Ray Air. Uh, you just need to change one line uh, parameters in, in various different components to increase the amount of parallelism per, per different component. So here we have, you know, um, just like changing the number of workers for the trainer, it will increase the size of the, uh, your training job. And then you can also uh, simultaneously increase the number of parallelism uh, for, for your tuning job so you can do a double scale out. So here, clearly in 20 lines of code, we're able to do an end-to-end -end, uh, scalable machine learning pipeline uh, workload. Um, so let's walk on to the next use case where we have uh, uh, multiple different libraries or services that you want to integrate with your machine learning platform. And the, the point here is that Ray Air actually allows, uh, allows this to be done really easily with, with uh, specific APIs and integrations coming out of the box. Right, so if you're a machine learning or platform team, you often want to support uh, the latest and greatest tooling for your machine learning engineers and, and your data scientists. And this, this is primarily because the, the, the field moves so quickly and you want to stay ahead of the curve. Um, and so Ray Air actually comes with a large number of integrations with open source. Um, there's a bunch of different logos uh, on this page, but I think the, at the very high level, right, um, we have integrations with the data ecosystem, uh, such as like Pandas or, or Aero, right? Uh, there's integrations with machine learning frameworks, actually Boost, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Hugging Face, so on and so forth. Integrations with optimization libraries, such as Optuna and HyperOpt. Uh, and integrations with, with, uh, with model monitoring services and tracking services, such as Arise, um, such as weights and biases, such as MLflow. Uh, and finally, um, uh, integrations with, with other model serving uh, APIs, such as FastAPI. So, so again, there's a, there's a ton of things that come out of the box already, and we're going to be working towards uh, more integrations uh, in the next release. Uh, but this is just to give you a flavor of how Ray Air can sort of fit into your existing machine learning ecosystem that you have within your organization. But not, that's not only it. Ray Air also provides integration APIs to plug in new machine learning ecosystem libraries. This allows your team to be future-proof and avoid, uh, avoid migration fatigue as the ecosystem continues to evolve. So let's take exa example workflow that we've seen before uh, multiple times already. Now, if you have a custom solution for data storage with a RAID data source integration, you're going to be able to implement an adapter to read and write. Now, this is used in uh, data processing, used in batch prediction, so on and so forth. Let's say there's a new hot uh, machine learning training framework that's on the block with a new uh, with a RAID train API with, with a data parallel trainer. You're able to easily integrate this new framework, enable multi-GPU, multi-node training. Uh, and still integrate with the rest of the ecosystem, such as hyperparameter tuning using preprocessors, uh, all within this uh, trainer API. And finally, if you, there's uh, a custom machine learning uh, tracking system that you have in-house, in or some experiment registry or experiment tracking system, um, you can use a callback with, within both the trainer and tuner interface, which allows you to plug in your training metrics uh, without needing to rewrite or re refactor a large amount of infrastructure. So the goal here is to sort of emphasize that Ray Air allows your organization to be uh, future-proof, and, uh, and especially because it's open source, uh, there's all of, a lot of extensibility that we offer within, uh, within just like the interfaces that we provide in Ray Air. Um, finally, let's talk about when you would use Ray Air uh, as part of a custom machine learning platform, and specifically uh, Ray Air as the compute core for this uh, machine learning platform. 
So at a later talking summit, Shopify's uh, machine learning platform team uh, will be talking about how they use the Ray Air libraries uh, for multiple components within their machine learning platform. Uh, so we're talking about like pre-processing, training, batch inference, so on and so forth. And this example is precisely what we foresee users to be building uh, with Ray Air, right? So uh, Cruise and Uber also will be talking about how they're using Ray within their machine learning platform as, uh, as the compute core for, for their infrastructure. And what I want to emphasize here is that Ray Air, uh, Ray and the libraries in Ray Air are just only a part of the machine learning platform. The platform actually includes many other components, and we'll dive into why they exist and what, what's, what's going to be missing. So, um, so just to build out sort of a mental model for, for everyone here, um, you might start off with a simple Ray Air program, which is just a Python script that we showed before, right? And this Python script it will, will basically be the core for your platform if you decide to build your own. Uh, you might have multiple users uh, using your platform, so you're going to want to use some sort of cluster scheduling mechanism. This can be uh, on Kubernetes with the new Kubray integration, uh, or even on any scale which provides managed uh, Ray services and Ray clusters. Right? And each of these programs will probably interact with a large number of other components. Uh, as you saw, like, Ray Air programs are largely focused on compute, but you will also want to have things such as a feature store, a lake house or experiment tracking system, a model registry, so on and so forth. Or also, you might want to have some, some sort of dedicated way for users to interact with the platform. So you're going to need something like a notebook service or a job scheduler. These aren't part of Ray Air, but pre as previously mentioned, Ray Air integrates with these systems and also provides the scalable compute there so that you can reduce the friction from development to production. So now we've covered how you can use Ray Air. Let's talk about Air itself. So with the current status, Ray Air is going to be released as beta in 2.0, which means that you are all encouraged to try it out and let us know what sort of feature requests or sort of pain points that you run into. In future releases, we really plan to uh, focus on but improving our integration story. So providing out-of-the-box integrations with uh, data sources or feature stores and mod monitoring services, and also improving uh, the data-intensive workloads uh, in terms of scalability and performance and reliability. Obviously, this roadmap is uh, currently fungible and, 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 and flexible here. So if you have anything that you'd love to see in Air or any sort of workload that you'd love to integrate or even contribute back to, into Air, we'd love to talk to you. Um, so a little bit about some of the user experiences that we've been having with uh, Ray Air, especially during the alpha and, and prototyping stage. Um, we've had a couple users that are just really, really excited about, uh, about Air and just want to give some testimonials here. Um, one data scientist has mentioned that the productivity has felt like the, has doubled um, and can't wait until Air is released. And they've been using the nightly builds, um, which is you know, like kind of scary for me, but uh, is, is incredibly you know, exciting that someone is willing to sort of uh, take the cutting edge and bleeding edge there, and, and just because they see such a massive productivity boost from using Ray Air. Another machine learning engineer uh, at a local startup uh, has mentioned that they've been able to recreate a data ingest pipeline for training um, within two weeks, even though they've built the previous solution over six months. So what, basically, the takeaway here is that Ray Air is really going to provide, I, I really do think a lot of users are going to get a massive productivity, productivity boost, and machine learning teams are going to move much faster now that, now that Ray Air is released. Um, so if you want to get involved, if you're excited about Ray Air as, as much as you are, uh, as much as I am, um, so you can chat with the developers on the Ray Slack. There's going to be an Air Dog Fielding channel. Uh, that, that you, can, you can take part in and, and sort of post questions or interact with the developers. Um, the entire team will be there and actively monitoring and answering questions. Well, we'll be having many more meetups uh, after this race summit, so uh, please come out to that. We'll be uh, trying to make this more of like a, a not just a San Francisco thing, but all across the world. And then also you can come chat, chat with me or Eric uh, at the race summit. Um, so, so that's it for Ray Air, and really hope uh, oh, this gives a great overview over the project. And if you have any questions or have any sort of feature requests or, or want to just share excitement, uh, just please come talk to me, or, and we're, we'll be happy to answer any questions at this point.
I think Thomas has a mic, so if anyone has any questions, just raise your hand. Oh yeah, there's one question right here. Um, thanks, Richard and Eric. That was a really great presentation. Um, so I just was curious about like the differences between uh, Ray data sets as it is offered today versus like Ray data sets and how that would be offered, for example, in, in uh, Ray Air. So how would the API differ um, in terms of you know like um, scaling, etc.? Like what are some of the performance differences that we can expect concretely? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So the question was. How does data sets in the previous version of Ray differ from data sets with Air? And I think there's two things. Uh, first, the data team at uh, AnyScale has been pushing on the scalability of data sets. So um, there'll be a talk later, um, I think today, on like, you know, a terabyte scale shuffle with data sets. And the second thing is um, integrating data sets with, with, with the Air APIs. So like, uh, we have a really good integrations for batch inference and for the training pipelines. That they, it's not actually changing the data sets APIs, but it's just letting you easily pass the data sets to you know, Torch Trainer, uh, to Batch Inference, and so on. So it's about, it's about integrations. Yeah. Yeah. Can you keep your hand up if you have questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the great presentation. Um, I have a question regarding the integration with MLOps, including KFP um, and also TFX. Uh, how uh, well are, is Ray integrated with those, and are people using these integrations currently? Thank you. Yeah, so I can take that. So um, right now, like uh, users don't necessarily use uh, Ray, Ray Air with KFP or with, with TFX, but rather use it alongside. Uh, TFX and uh, as for for KFP uh, users, I, I think basically like we've we've been alpha for so uh, for for a bit of time, so we haven't heard that much usage with KFP. Uh, but but if if we were to sort of architect it, like one way of doing this is running uh, KFP as the orchestrator and then running Ray Air uh, workloads on top. Um, now that being said, if if you don't need uh, if you don't need a workflow orchestrator. Uh, then you can sh simply just have everything in a single program, and you don't need to insert uh, different sort of like container boxes in order to to orchestrate like a like the workflow. You can just have everything in a single Python script. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, there's a couple hands over here. Please keep your hand up so that Thomas can see you. Hi. Yes. So uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was wondering if you could uh, uh, mention any plans that you have or any functionality that you currently have around uh, kind of reproducibility. So let's say uh, you ran one of these scripts uh, and you know out came a model on the other side, and uh, you know a month later you wanted to go back and say, oh, how could I reproduce that model again? Um, uh, do you have any functionality around like tracking uh, of executions that would allow you to uh, uh, you know go back and reproduce those sort of things? Uh, that's a great question. So I think right now the story with regards to tracking and reproducibility will be offloaded to some other systems such as MLflow or weights and biases. Um, at a very very high level, I think uh, Ray Area doesn't necessarily want to uh, integrate with those. Uh, so, sorry, it doesn't want to sort of extend its own functionality to provide uh, tracking service tracking services, but rather integrate with these third party ecosystem projects that are actually really really great projects. But I would say one thing is that like because everything is so so self contained that you can write because you can write like these scalable um, pipelines and scalable workflows with Ray Air as a single Python program, it becomes much easier to integrate into like. Uh, say say GitHub uh, without needing to sort of do like some crazy like you know Docker based uh, uh, Git uh, like CI/CD sort of thing in order to enable reproducibility. Does it make sense? Cool. Another question here. Yeah. So if I use the Spark connector with uh, Ray, do I have to run a Spark cluster as well? Yeah, great question. Um, so we have several ways of interoperating with Spark. And um, one, one way is just, you know, you run a separate cluster, Spark writes to Parquet, and we can read it, you know, load it for ML. Uh, so that's like, kind of like the basic way. Um, there is a community project to run Spark directly within Ray, just like, you know, run Torch within Ray. So we have some users that are pretty happy with that. Um, so it's like basically uh, Spark is like running within like Ray actors, and then it's like you have, there are some optimizations around the, the memory sharing. Yeah, and the project's called RayDP. So if you're interested, you can definitely Google that and take a look. 
Yeah, one last question, I would say, maybe in the back. Can I use uh, Ray Air with Horvod? Yeah, you can. There's a Horvod trainer that's actually built out of the box and, and maintained by the Ray team. So, uh, so would it have to be a Ray cluster to use? Uh, yeah, yeah, you would have to, you would run it on a Ray cluster, but you would run the Horvod communication protocol and the communication workers um, uh, within, uh, on, on Ray Air. Any other questions? Are there any plans to add profit to the list of model integrations? Yeah, so that's, that's actually a really good question. So we've actually interacted with multiple users uh, who are interested in, in, in adding profit and other time series uh, libraries. Um, I think that's something that we would definitely uh, that is like you know somewhere on the roadmap, but if you'd like to you know ask us to prioritize it, you come talk to us. I'd love to hear about your use case and sort of work with you to sort of co-design the right APIs, uh, you know, in, in order to enable that. There's one more question over there, or two more. Hey, uh, how do you manage uh, versions and library dependency versions that uh, could be conflicting between different applications? Yeah, I could take that. So um, yeah, that's, this is tying more into Ray's uh, story for dependency management. So we have a, a concept of a runtime environment in Ray, which um, is kind of like saying for this job, these are, these are the dependencies. Um, of course, there's always the, you know, the, the environment dependencies in the cluster as a fallback. Hi. Um... I think one question was definitely about dependencies, and the other one was about um, testing, as in when we were rolling it out. I didn't, I haven't particularly heard anything concrete about like A/B testing, hypothetically, or, or how do we sort of when we're productionizing? Is that an air thing or is it a Ray core thing? I guess. Yeah. So, so the question is about A/B testing in the context of serving, and I, I think Ray, Ray serve has itself already a really great uh, A/B testing support. So, I, um, I, there might be a talk about it, or you can connect with the serve team there. That'll probably be it. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.